that you know the normal satisfaction on this like i've been pretty impressed with them like you said they've been able to compete with some good international competition so the you know the skies are looking a lot better for these guys but i think even on the other token for this for marka i mean even if this is like an o2 loss these guys like honestly getting the experience is going to be the biggest thing out of this and the first map is of course going to be ancient which was the pick here from marka Registrata. so that's meaning that wild card is going to be starting on ct and then the second map is going to be switched over to vertigo which uh interestingly enough of course was from uh wild card very interesting pick from marka i mean this map is is such a fantastic one for wild card and one that they were picking into spirit of all teams so for me, I feel as though Marka are really just trying to set the tone after watching all those demos and seeing if they have what it takes to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Wildcard, trying to play towards their strengths. And here they come, looking for a beast point straight away from the bait and switch setup is straight away there. Sus will find himself a double. Sonic with one as well. One prong of the attack gone. And now the rest of the CTs can turn their attention to lane where Wildcard just go flawlessly in the pistol. And to me, Laz, this is kind of the nature of what I expect this series to go with. Complete domination in the macro and micro game. Yeah, I mean, when you talk about, like, officials, too, it's it's just, it's hard to not be, you know, impressed by Wildcard's win percentage, too, right? Like, 71% win rate on this, like, probably actually their, their third best or if not fourth best map that they play. We've definitely seen them have some really close games against them. Uh, stiffer competition so i think for marka to be you know going for this kind of a pick was definitely a bold move but let's you know look we'll see what happens the pistol round wasn't looking too good a little abysmal not uh, much to brag about here but right now if they can get the bomb down i mean again this is going to be a nice conversion into this third round considering that there is some beads invested into this one paladin so right now you can just tell they're kind of just looking for a feeler hoping that they can find an opening duel but so far not so good it's always going to be tough as a T side to really dig yourselves out of an O2 start off of the pistol. I mean, you'd always love to get that little ball rolling and, and try to really put the pressure on the CTs. But unfortunately, things aren't looking so good here. Kuzi is actually not even purchased into this gun in the second round. Looking towards purchasing that sniper as quickly as possible. AMC star of Marka Registrata last alive, and he will fall. 2-0 start for the CTs, and now really curious to see what the game plan is here from the Mexican side. What is the game plan? How do they want to look at wildcard CT side? What have they seen in the demos to warrant this pick? Because boy oh boy, Laz, is it a risk and a half <laughs> to pick into this. Yeah, it really was. Like, when we saw it, I was like, no there there's no way like was that a typo did someone like hit the wrong button or like what's what's going on here but no indeed it is going to be the play and you can see wall card now they're going to just ambush into mid they're going to get this full control jabo's going to be playing close up to this got the mp9 look at how much damage you're inflicting and oh man they just annihilate this down leaving it to only you want an amc now these two guys have to ignite they have to be able to find these trades but they're just trying to go through fights through a smoke. Like, these guys are you know, not firefighters. I don't know what they're doing. Like, now we're down to a minute and 22. We're talking about a one on three. And that's such a terrible situation there for Marka. They get, they're trying to get that mid brawl going. And they get exactly what they're looking for. But they just cannot come up the better. No. What? That being said, B1 thrust into the clutch. Misses the CT smoke, but finds the kill nonetheless. Has to get this bomb down, however. And Stanislaus got the lineup. He's thinking that it's a fake, but... That C4 will hit the dirt. And now B1 has a real possibility at making this one a reality. Yeah, I like the positioning. This isn't too bad. I mean, again, just needs to keep the gun out, right? Expecting somebody to be through A main, but now he should have the double Q of the noise. He's going to be able to get a swing onto this. This could be huge. Who's he looking around? He might be able to get this free kill, and indeed he will, but he's only got a couple bullets left in the chamber. And now Stan is low. Yeah, he's gonna be able to take his head plenty of time remaining and honestly i was you know giving a little bit of criticism and saying like i can't believe it we're only down to one on three but that thing came right down to the wire here paladin so honestly not a bad effort all things considered of how poorly that round started off and the finish was was almost there yeah uh, but but unfortunately those are the those big moments that you really hope that can turn the tides of the war and unfortunately, it doesn't work out in their favor. The mid-brawl fails, and so does the clutch attempt. 
and now the CT side will continue to get more and more aggressive as time goes on. Luckily for them, Marka do get the bomb plant. They have max loss more so they can purchase it at this one, but it's a combo oh, of a and some bullets from Sus and aggression from JBA. Marka now thrust for another man disadvantage. They're going to try to pull it back, but Sonic is there to fill the void that JBA left off. And that's the issue with wildcard. When you cut off one head of the Hydra, there's one to immediately replace it. Yeah, and honestly, I just love the fact of that, you know, getting that mid control for wildcard is, again, it's just so important, right? Because you could just see how fast the JBA was able to push on the catwalk. He's able to get, you know, another easy frag. Even though he gets taken out eventually, like that that quick trade of Sonic, it was perfect. And now, oh, Stanislaw, you need gun out. Oh, no, Taylor, why are you not looking, brother? Oh, you got to check your six. You got to clear those corners, but... Uh... Oh boy, things are uh, things are not looking good here, Paladin. I'm I'm still trying to be optimistic. I'm still trying to be positive, but so far it's uh, it's looking a little grim here. Yeah, I, and I, I do understand the position Mark is in, but they've got to play with a little bit more tenacity if they want to go toe to toe with wild card. Maybe something a little bit more pacey. Try to take some early map control and really get in the faces. And you know, they tried to establish that in that initial gun round, but. Old card were right there to the task. Now, Marka decided to play a little bit more tepid in this one, playing behind the B door smoke. And that's okay for now, but they do have quite a little bit of utility. So they're going to have to toss that in to get themselves into lane. And they're going to have to get Stanislaw off this angle, but that ball top is so well placed. It bottles them all up into the cubby and allows Susie to go to town. He finds that first kill. Now he's going to to get run down. He's going to up another. Ooh. And unfortunately, Stan is not there for the trade. We pull it back to threes. This one seems a little bit more doable, Laz. Yeah, it's a little bit uh, more majestic, right? I mean, this was looking like it should be an easy cleanup, and now it looks like it might be, but a little bit of a challenging way, but Ops should be able to get retrieved. And honestly, even that position from Fuzi, like, it's, it's tough, right? Because you're playing a close angle. You were against some of those Tech 9s and the Mac 10s, but either way, I mean, he was able to get that first opener. Does get taken out, but look, no harm, no foul. I mean, it, it, a little bit more of a costly round than they probably want it to be, but look, they're still in winning ways. They haven't lost a round yet so far in the game, but, you know, Marcus, you know, I, I made a comment that it's not looking good, it's looking grim, but despite, you know, being in round six, we have had, what, maybe two, if not three close-ish rounds where it's cost money for wild card but we need a little bit more now we need to see them really ignite and, and find themselves a little bit more of a push here just to be able to get themselves back on the board and making this a bit more competitive yeah they need that sucker punch to really kick start this campaign on the offense Nothing offered up just yet amc posted up on the boost box to see if he can find something but spam goes both ways Wildcard come out slightly on top. AMC is actually pushed off of the boost box, but he still finds a kill onto his counterpart of Fuzi nonetheless. And that does mean that there's a possibility of his B attack. They're going to go charging in. Sus sees four players on his screen. Manages to get one on the way out, but is there still an expectation that Sonic is here? No, that there is not. Sonic will double up. Stand still that snake in the grass. And AMC, there is no way he's expecting this. At this point, he's going to try to get the hell out of Dodge, but he has no idea that Sand can be that close. And Jordani, on a late lurk, I mean, he's been found out, and then some JBA trained on his angle. And it's just a matter of mere moments as he falls. It's 6-0, the clean sheet still alive for wild card. Yeah, and honestly, I feel like we're still kind of seeing... You know, and I mean this with all respect too, is, is kind of that inexperience, right? Like we see Marka, you know, they get themselves a little bit more competitive on that B ramp. They're, they're looking like they're going to have that site control. Sonic was just playing on elbow and the utility was about to get thrown, but it was going to get thrown in the wrong spot. And Majestic just kind of stands in the open. Like he's just, he's caught out, you know, with his pants down essentially. And then, you know, Sonic's able to find himself an easy two kills. So I, I just feel like we're seeing these kind of like late round decisions that are not White up to snuff, honestly, which is going to be costly against a team like Wildcard, where we talk so much about the experience of all these players from different teams. And oh, oh God, Stan is law, man. He just finds a triple before he goes to the grave. AMC, though, hang on. I mean, this is what we were talking about. This Ooh. guy is a beast of his own. 
And look at this, three for three. And all of a sudden now, yes, it is down to AMC, but my God, how are we in a 1v2 like this? And he's only got 25 HP, and he still has to worry about JBA. Post it up in the corner. They're going to be able to recover, but man, oh man, it looked like he was about to be off the leash on that one. Yeah, I mean, there's the individual prowess of AMC finally showing up to town. Two beautiful P250 kills. And you're thinking maybe there's a possibility, but after that third one, unfortunately, it takes so much damage and all of those scuffles that there's just no way that he could reorient on GBA. You know, they're still keeping it competitive in terms of the economy. They're not letting people in and out of place, but they've got to still find a way to collect some of these rounds so far. It's really been clicking, but AMC certainly is. Stannis lot down for the count, cave control established, even though they've lost mid. So now Marka can slow the pace of this round down and really start to put the pressure onto the CTs. Yeah, you can already see again, you have JBA and Sonic just locking down this mid. So now you can see the fight on Catwalk has to be commenced here and Taylor's trying his best, but we get eradicated now. Trying to go for the one-on-one -on -one duel and Sonic's just eating them alive. And even though the JBA gets taken out, at least the trade's going to come through, and he's speaking of trades, I mean, even B1 now, he's able to bounce back on something. So now we're at a man advantage. Now this is one of the first times we can actually say that here for Marka. They have the ball back of B main, and they're just going to take things a bit more slow. They got that minute remaining. Wildcard have a few decisions that they can try to go for. They can either investigate on A, clear up that information, go for the retake, which looks like that might be the case. And now Marka, I mean, if they want, they got themselves a free bomb site. Swedish compatriots looking to edge their way back into this round here. Unfortunately, making the wrong decision, hedging their bets towards that first letter of the alphabet. And they'll realize that it is that B-bomb site. They'll have a fast flank here into mm -hmm. the lane. But at this point, 20 seconds left on the clock. And with how long that they're taking... Marka really have an opportunity here to get comfortable in these post plans. But it's a player in the cave with the ult no less, and Susp has a freebie. B1 also takes some significant damage, so this round is absolutely hard for the CTs. Susp and Fuzi really have a shot at piecing it all together. B1 oh, is on the edges of the smoke, and he still gets caught out. It's all on the Jardani, and he's been mollied out of position. Having down the digits and Fuzi's there to collect. That's another unfortunate round for Marco Registrata. And you really think that they've got to convert one of these, but unfortunately for them, the clutch is all in the favor of Wildcard. Yeah, and that's beautiful too, right? Like, let's not forget. Like, that's what I was kind of saying before is these guys were like leaning on CT spawn. They were going towards A. They were just clearing that information and them just kind of poking and prodding and then even just getting active on, you know, slowly going back for the B site. Like you said as well, is the fact that, you know, the flank was already a lot quicker than I think Marco was expecting. Like AMC was not even aware of somebody to, you know, make their way to the cave. So now they're going to have to do something big here because now JBA, he's going to have to lock things down. He's just free firing away. He's able to find himself too. Almost two and a half or three. And now Sonic's just cleaning up as well. This one looks like it could be all over as B1 is the last remaining player. He's already spotted. Now it's just a matter of time. He's just trying to take as many bodies as he can. Fuzi, who other than him, he's able to put nine on the board here, Paladin. And honestly, Wildcard, they're looking flawless right now. I mean, it's absolute turrets on either end of the map. On, on B, you've got Sonic tearing heads. On A, you've got JBA locking it down as well. I guess Sonic in middle and, and, and Susp on B. So you've got all of these avenues cut off with multi-kill potential across every single sector of that CT side. And yeah, if you're Marka, you're kind of feeling heavy-handed right now. you got to take attack time on and discuss what the potential answers are because for right now, they don't really have one. Yeah, I kind of honestly, I, I, I would have liked to see one a lot earlier, to be honest, like sitting at round 10 calling the first one i was like oh i just feel like now this is a, a tough score line to make a comeback on i mean definitely doable like i'm not saying it's not but it's just you know you, you haven't had a singular round on your t side i thought there could have been a couple opportunities for the timeouts just to really clean things up especially when those rounds were getting quite close right like there was a couple 2v2s we saw a 3v2 that was in their advantage at one point uh, let's see 
Let's see what their new plan is going to be. It looks like a 4 1 split. Getting just, I think, that's going to be. Or Danny's going to be by himself. He's going to reconvene with his comrades. And now you can see Wall of Cards. They're just going to go back for a big old swing. And look at how many firefights they're able to win. They just swing and they're just knocking them out here. Now, Zuss trying to do what he can, but good trade backs. And now all of a sudden, Paladin, we're in a 2v2. And the HP is critical once again here for AMC. But is that really going to be too much against him? Uh, it might be. At this point, they know where Fuzi's located, but the flash is really good to allow for JV to duel. And he'll take down that low HP bar of AMC. It's all on the Jardani once more. He's been spotted. And he's been executed. Double digits found in 10 rounds for wildcard. And it's very clear to me that mid control is the biggest issue here for Marco Registrata. If they're not able to establish that, JBA is going to do that every single round where he pushes in a shelf. They've got the flash combos as well. Aggression down the B elbow side of things as well. And they're going to just continue to get condensed and compressed upon round in and round out. At this point, the name of the game is just to get these last two rounds and make sure there's something to, to write home about. Or otherwise, wild card might just be red-faced at this point, Miles. Yeah, honestly, that, that's a really good point. And, and I was kind of hoping to see, you know, especially for Marka, like, you said it, you nailed it on the head. It's like they, they are losing this mid-control. And wild card, as soon as they get that control, it just feels like the round is, is in their hands, right? And now we finally get to see an opening duel is actually going to benefit here from Marka, which I feel like never happens. It always seems like they have to lose at least two players before they finally make some kind of a little bit of a reply. But now they have the man advantage. So he's a little bit more lackluster, but look at this. More swings, why not? But at least the trades are coming back through. Now we're starting to see some kills coming through, but it might be a little too late as we're on round 11. Let's not forget that. And now the bomb is going to make all the longest rotation. They're throwing the utility just to buy these guys some time, but is that going to be enough time? Because look at JBA. He's running into his own grave, and now Sonic in a one-on-three. He has to do some kind of heroic play here, Paladin, and honestly, he's got a bit of a crossfire to go against. Now I like these odds for him, and now finally, there's a round on the board. Well, last round of the half. Tough situation there. That is a tough situation. I mean, honestly, it all comes down to that to that opener that, that they get onto Stanislaw and Cave. As soon as that happens, the map slowly opens up. They have an opportunity to go back into mid control and they can always retake it once they have it. And now it's going to be all out of all into this B bomb site. They're catching players spamming through those wooden boards of that got themselves all the way through the shelf thrusting themselves into a very doable 5v3 sure there's cavalry all arriving towards the site but it's a little too little too late Jordani's found another one and it's all on the food five we saw a near 1v5 earlier on today can this one be converted not to be 1v5s are still really hard guys we're gonna take a short break and when we come back that second half
Well, not looking like it's much of a wild card because so far it's been a 10-2 first half as we transition in the first map and the second. And uh, Paladin, I gotta know, what are your thoughts going into this uh, CT pistol? It's kind of what we expected, right? A well-oiled machine that is wildcard gaming and now looking to dominate their way towards a map one victory. Hold up outside of A and they're expecting some sort of aggression, but it's coming on the other end of the map. It's more towards the lane side of things. Marco Registrar, I know exactly what's coming. They know it's this A hit. And eventually, sound cue is going to be given and the rotation is going to start to come in. Four players to come through Donut, but two players have already been eradicated straight away. Sonic and Sus will find three between the two of them. Make that four. That's all up to B1 in a flash. And now, Wildcard look to pounce and capitalize and get themselves that 11th round. Yeah, this is looking pretty grim, like I said. I said it once before, I'll say it again. A flawless round. Not uh, not the way you want it. I mean, especially on the CT side, you need every kill's going to count for that economy. You just have to be... And honestly, if they could have got the pistol, this could have been a, an interesting conversation just to see how that second round could have panned out for them. But, man, oh man, it just seems like everything is... Uh, the deck of cards are against these guys right now. But at the same token, I, I can't take this away from Wildcard. They're playing a really good game. They're hitting their shots. There really hasn't been too much to criticize on, which I wasn't kind of thinking we would in this matchup. I think more of the spotlight was to see how Marker could play against these guys, but here we go again. It's uh, going to be a full investment on this one. They're going to spend a lot of coin on this with the MP9s and the Deagle and 5.7, and honestly, Paladin, probably makes sense. They, they're getting desperate. Yeah, they have no other choice. They're going to go searching for some information out in the middle, but they don't really find anything, and it's rinse and repeat for wildcard and other... A fight. They get themselves a one for one. They got every trade to go, to go into their favor. But Majestix does pull one back. An aggression through the smoke from Four Taylor. Puts it all on to Stanislaw. The IGL, the captain, the leader of Wildcard. He spots out the first. And the second, but can only capitalize on the one, so an unlikely round from Marco Registrata, and that's them round number three. And it does mean that there's a little bit more legs to this game just yet. Wildcard will be forced into a very peculiar buy considering they don't get a bomb plant. And the CT side will now have a ripe opportunity to make this a little bit more competitive. Yeah, I actually really, really impressed, and I love that coordination. We see the one player in Temple, and then the one player in CT just kind of swinging together. Really, really good comms, just making sure that it's crystal clear, and that was able to find that, you know, two-on-one that they could have against Wildcard that put them in that advantage of a 3v1 situation. So, it does seem like there's a little bit of life left in these guys. But, I mean, again, you still have to consider that Wildcard, you have the Deagles and the Tech-9 with full utility available. So, this is, uh, again, if they can get a bomb plant... This is going to be a really good step for them. But already now, the CTs have pushed themselves onto B ramp. They got this banana control. This is strong positioning. But now can they capitalize this with the weapons that they got? I do like that they're playing forward with these MP9s, establishing aggressive B control, forcing Wildcard to either use utility or use body. Charging in to find themselves at one kill. And Majestic can only find two. The trades are in. Immaculate here in the fadeaway oh. deagle headshot from JBA as well. Talk about sublime. It leaves Jardani in a tough clutch, but he's cut down the high HP bar. It's all on to Stanislaw, and Jardani will clutch up in the 1v2. Four rounds for Marco Registrata. Man, that was a... Man, that was filthy of a shot. And that's what I was kind of saying, right? I'm like, look, wildcard still have beads. They got some pistols, so don't count them out. And honestly, even though they don't win the round, they get the bomb down. That's going to add the boost to the economy. It, it's not going to be great for this round, but it is going to help, right? And they brought it down to a 1v1 situation, so things looking pretty good, right? I mean, for Marka, that would have been a better round for them just to be able to keep everybody alive, but they still have enough coin in the pocket. You can see the office out. You can see the M4s are ready to go. But again, it still would have been nice just to be able to kind of keep some of those MP9s maybe as a more of a cash grab on this secondary round. But either way, we'll see. And now Sonic's going to be able to slip himself into mid. He's just going to be tucked away, but does take down a bunch of utility damage array. Down to 46 HP. And here with the Galil, a big task at hand. And the two of them hit the jab cross. And look at how fast they've already knocked out two of the players here from Marka. Yeah, that's unfortunate. They try to establish mid-control wildcard and 
to get these kills on a silver platter. Disassembling that crossfire with just a deagle and a galil. And now in the 3v5, if you're Marka, you just gotta go for this. Your money is sure in the tank, but you also lose the map altogether. They've got the weaponry advantage, but can they overcome the man disadvantage is the real question. Majestic's trying to get himself out of Donut, but there's JDA lying in wait. He finds that one. AMC now, it's time for him to shine. He finds a double, make it three. And now, maybe, just maybe, they can get on that bomb. They can start to cut the distance, but now that they're off of it, I think this round is over. He's going to try to get one as a consolation, but I don't think that's ever going to happen. He's going to fall to the bomb. Everyone goes down, but wildcard, they get map point first. Yeah, that was so, so nice. And I think that was Sonic, if I'm not mistaken, in Donut. And I mean, just, again, when you can do that kind of like jiggling around and pretending you're about to swing and just kind of toying with them and that kind of a post plant, absolutely beautiful so again not necessarily getting all the frags there but just burning the time and then they even the bomb took out the remaining players so they couldn't even save those ops you know so this is this is the abysmal of a purchase now we're talking about deagles seven and mp9 oh dear goodness not looking good and now wildcard realizing yep i think we got ourselves a, a pretty smooth round here in 17 they're going to be able to find Taylor as well with the opening duel. He's by himself. Nobody to trade him out. So we're starting to see a little bit of uh, hairlessness, I think, here from the CT side. Just kind of going for these like hero plays that really aren't much of a hero at all. Yeah, there isn't that same level of coordination that made me very excited for the debut of this squad. And now, wildcard. Firm control over very key portions of the map. They can wrap into A very easily. They can split on B if they want to as well. And that will be the end goal here for Wildcard. They get themselves that double necessary. Bob should go down. Oh, D1. All down to one man. Got a smoke in hand, no kit. Look at everything. All the utility flying at him. They know exactly where he is. They have a really good inkling of this and not looking good. Time is ticking against him and he has to get moving. He's just waiting for the smoke to dissipate. You can even just see, he's just kind of realizing, yeah, I think, uh, I think I'm screwed. I don't think I got a lot to do here unless I hit the best shots of my career in this kind of a situation, but this should be done and dusted. And indeed it is going to be the 13-4 and uh, wild card. They do a fantastic job to get that first uh, map done. And that was the pick from Marco. Let's not forget. But unfortunately, it was uh, a little too late for them. Yeah, you have glimpses of, of a great Marco Edistrada team there somewhere. I mean, AMC had a couple of solid rounds here and there. Uh, you had some nice coordination when they were given some certain advantages. But unfortunately, you look according to plan where Sonic is, is finding those mid kills. You know, Stanislaus locking down Cave. Fuzzy's just like a, a demon around the map. And you know, you've got Susp and JBA, these like lockdown anchors as well. Like, what's not to love about the wildcard defense across that map? But it really forces Marco Registrata to make some hard calls. And unfortunately, they just couldn't rise to the occasion individually or a as a team either and so right now when we move to vertigo they're really gonna have to show that they're made of sterner stuff on this defense and really prove to, to wildcard that they deserve to be at this stage right now because at this point it really does feel like it was an upset and it was a flash in the pan for marka and not necessarily a a telltale homecoming in, into this big stage agree with you now i mean a new map maybe new uh new team on this one and luckily for the opening duel it does start off nicely here for marka but then quickly just getting a little bit more of a bounce back but hang on the usps they are starting to make some connections now and you can see i think it's stan he's trying to get himself out of this but now he left for jba by his lonesome he does get the shot right in the corner of the the panel of wood here so now he's going to be able to go for the one-on-one but can't get it done so okay marka they despite you know the lackluster from map number one they will get ourselves uh, a little bit of a sparkle here in the uh, in the opening round that's a little bit more like it having a little bit more pep in there except to play ahead of that utility and really force wildcard into dueling them head on and that's what they were kind of trying to establish in the early goings of ancient but duels not working out made it a little bit more difficult for marka to exert their kind of presence within that first map of play but this feels a little bit more 
like it. Four nades purchased up for wild card at the bottom of ramp. Tossing that into maybe some player that's playing aggressive on those T sands, but unfortunately nobody there. So wild card will just slink on back. See if they can burn any little bit of utility. Yeah, I mean, no investment on this one. I mean, for wild card, I mean, honestly, if, if they, like I said, if they can find a bomb plan on this, that'd be awesome. Like, that'd be just for them to get some cash. Not too bad to transition into this third round. But not looking great so far. I mean, the one-on-one -on -one trade's not bad, and you still got that one deagle here for JBA alive, but Stan is kind of just, again, poking and prodding a little bit. He's going to get taken out. So now it's just a question about the wild card players, if they're going to be able to find anything else on this one. And... Sus was already getting himself pushed into mid here, just trying to see if he can find himself a little bit of an opening. But look at how much the CTs have just taken full control of this. They're just running around. They're just mowing the yard. They're just taking everybody down with them. So now it's just down to two players, and they're fully spotted. Should be done and over with, and indeed it will. So Marco now has found themselves two rounds in a row with only two casualties. Well, that's fantastic to have for Marco, taking minimal casualties. And now... This is the true test. Wild card, get the guns out. We'll see what they have to offer. Maybe he offer AMC. And we saw what he can do with that sniper rifle. It, if, he, if he gets going, it, it really does start to get a little bit dangerous in his hands. And that advantage should be exerted upon the five rifles of wild card. He's getting burned down. Uh. To zero. <laughs> How does that even happen? I couldn't oh. tell you. I'm thinking there's probably a molly up and a flashbang in his face, and he didn't realize he was burning that low. That's an unfortunate, unfortunate start to this round for the Mexicans. Yeah, and I mean, he was the one with the AWC, right? So, I mean, that was, again, your star player that just gets burned alive here pretty quickly. Not the best start, but now they're trying to see if they can bounce back. It's looking like it's uh, more of a backfire oh. here because Susp is just uh, being a Sus player here. Just winning all these gunfights. Finally gets put down to it, but it might be a little too late here, Paladin, because now Jessica does have the op in hand. M4 going to be picked up here for B1, but again, their positioning, they're not really with each other right now. They're, they're doing a full rotate. It's not going to be the best situation. This op just needs to stay alive as long as possible. And this might just be a save, honestly. There's no reason for them to go for it. And yeah, I think they've realized, okay, you know what? Let's get out of here. P1 is barely able to run away. But Wildcard finally take a, a really good round. And honestly, for the work of Sus, be able to find two. Yeah, I mean, it's just immense to find a double kill there. And, you know, when you're plugged into that right side of the, the B stairs, you're playing you're playing just to, to get a kill before you go down. And that test with flying colors. Jestix would love to hold on to these guns, but Jestix falls and you and Aforementian cuts down with quite a few bullets, but he won't be able to win the tail of the gets a free upgrade, and Wildcard get right back to winning ways, breaking that little streak that was building for Marco Edistrada. Yeah, all good things uh, maybe to an end here, but maybe not yet. Still got the double on fours. I'll be working around here with the five sevens, deagles, things like that. Even the MP9 here from uh, from Jordani, so not bad. But see if they can be able to pack a little bit of a punch with this one. And now with wall card, they're not letting that lead get too far. And you can see a double player set that's going to be here from the CT side. They're going to double boost into mid. I like this. Nobody is going to go for that play here on the T side. Taylor is trying to investigate a little bit with that five seven. AMC close by to with the Deeg, but I like that they're not overextending on this Paladin. Like, I like that they're kind of looking for information, but it seems like they're quite as quite scared. And now maybe, okay, not a bad trade, but they're going to need a little more here. Now we're starting to see Wallacard. They're getting this ramp control. Now they're getting sidewalk control. This could even be site control. Yeah, and Sonic getting that kill definitely will confirm it as such. The rifles... Still not getting activated into this round. And honestly, at this point, shouldn't head for the hills, but Majestix will play forward. He loses that one valuable rifle. And now, P1 looking to find an exit on the way out, but 
really got to retreat at this point. Wild card again with a snappy A take. Just slowly bleeding out resources. Bleeding out space as well. And now Marco Registrata will have to play against a 2 2 scoreline and not really having any weaponry to defend that lead. Oh my goodness, too. I was just thinking, like, Jordani, maybe, yeah, that'll be nice. He'll get a little bit of an off angle. He can get himself a kill. Nah. Onyx just uh, built different, apparently. But no, a really good clear from them. They don't sacrifice anybody. Like you said, only one person was down. But this, these resources from the CT side, man, it, it is just, it's hit the bottom of the barrel now. You can see, like, the highest amount of money, 2250 Not looking good here. Not looking good at all, but... At least they have the M4 still that's going to be saved, but that's a lot That's a lot to ride on this one player, right? I mean, this is somebody that now has to make a play, somebody that has to be able to win some engagements. I was kind of surprised that AMC maybe wouldn't have gotten it. He's clearly been the, the one heavy-hitting player on this roster. I feel like I'd be dropping it to him with zero hesitation, but clearly they want to use that armor for B1 and just see if he's going to be able to activate himself because his teammates so far are deactivated. Yeah, understandable. Now, AMC's looking for a gun. He wants to pick it up. And he gets the Deagle, at least. Which is some semblance of a gun. And he wants to aggress forward. Is anybody watching for this is the question, because if not, it might be a freebie right on the cards. Wildcard are actually going to abscond from the area. And it's on Marka to really clear out that position after they leave. Slower approach to this B bomb site. And Sesp has gotten a lot of key headway. I think Marka's cleared out all of the bottom of A ramp, but they're going to hightail it back to B. They know what's coming. Jordani would love to get a kill here before the rest of his team arrives, but he can't find anything. Yeah, he's taking pretty swiftly too. Look at how fast they're able to just, you know, find these kills and even B1. He can only get himself one duel, and that's where we were kind of saying, look, like he has to be able to find more than that with the rifle. Not a bad shot here from AMC, but again, might be a little too late. Just trying to fight something through Jenny now. Just blocked off by all the utility. Everybody's aware. Now it's just about hitting these heads, and there we go. Nicely cleaned up. Lead back in favor here for wildcard. And we're actually going to see the timeout being used a lot quicker, right? I mean, let's not forget on the first map, it was called at 9-0? Uh, 10-0? 9-0. It was 9-0. Because I remember thinking, like, man, we're, uh, we're almost in double digits. So, you know what? I like that they use it, though, Paladin. This is a lesson learned. Yeah. It definitely feels like they should use it a little bit more earlier. And you can tell that these are three rounds that they've just ground out here, wild card on this T side. Offenses on, on this map nowadays have gotten a lot more difficult with that extra opening on that A-bomb site. Feels like you're forced into repeated B-executes. But right now, Wildcard are finding answers on both sides of the map. Sus month again, he's just in the lower end here. He might be able to find these fights. And look at that timing. How does he get away with that? Oh no! Jordani and B1. They had it. They had the good positioning. They were trying to, you know, get some control. It just seemed like again, there's just a little bit of a weird hesitation in the positioning of Jordani gets himself over peak just barely and allowing that one-on-one -on -one fight to happen in wildcard. They take it with strides, man, and now they put themselves in a five-on-three so early on in the round. Again, this is a, t a tough pill to swallow right now for Marka. They can't seem to find anything or buy a kill. Yeah, it is a mark of a true great breed player here in Sus. Continuing to find multi kills on the extremities. Marka don't know what to do. Split apart now, trying to find something. Yeah, full utility too, but again, just like for this, I, th I feel like they just got to survive and keep these guns as much as possible. 
unless they can find an opening, but surely I, I just don't see that happening. Wild card already have this B site in control. And look at how far they're pushing out. They're extending. They want to branch out, and that's why. They want to make sure there's no save rifles at all. It's a matter of time here for AMC. And oh, his back is turned. Not good. There it is. A flawless round once again here for Wildcard. We start the 2 0 start here for Marka. It was looking really good. And then all of a sudden, you know, Wildcard, once again, they're just kind of showcasing why they have a 100% win rate on this map in comparison to Marka, where we don't know what to expect at all on a map like Vertigo. It's always going to be a tough ask with a map like this. And now, no money in the bank for Marco Edistrada. Just an A stack. Basically make like a cheerleader setup on the back of the bomb site and hope that you can pick up a straggling rifle. But it's a tough, tough ask at this point. Actually, gonna go Sonic, and Sonic has a couple tools on his plate. He'll find himself two. Uzi is getting one down, but he's got teammates in the back. He's got a bit of a ahead of that long haul, and now the rifle should clean up, and they absolutely will. Five rounds now look good for wildcard. And beyond the pistol conversion, Laz, Marco Registrata have nothing to offer. Yeah, they really don't. It just it just seems like now this is going to be an important round because we'll see the all back into play here for AMC where, you know, again, let's let's not forget. I think that was in round three where he had the op got roasted alive. I think, like you said, the flash landed perfectly on his face. He couldn't see anything and he's just burning alive. And actually, the CT side is going to commit to double off. So this is a very different tactic from them. I'm not even against it. They got to try something different here. But is that going to be enough? Is that really going to be the, you know, the secret thing they need to do. The secret weapon to finding themselves a round back in their favor. Maybe, just maybe, but... These T's already back to the default. Slowly taking this a ram control. And look at the timing. And B1 has a utility in his hand. And now, Jessic's realizing his teammates are just being eradicated. And he only gets himself this one. And already, once again, we see that wild card. They get three frags for the cost of one of their teammates' lives. And honestly, I don't mind those odds if I'm wild card. Not at all. Right now, it does feel like it's on bread and butter, where you don't realize what's coming until it's over. You're, you're thinking that they're going to slow down the pace of their default, and eventually you find an answer, and things get absolutely insane, all in a blink of an eye. This is what makes Wildcard such an exciting team within North America. And unfortunately for Marco Registrar, they're going to have to suffer these these rounds in real time. They're going to have to learn this in the hard way. Terrorists win. I mean, Susie took a lot of HP from that, but it's all fine. It's all fine and dandy, but... Yeah, I mean, again, now we can see a gun round once again from Marco, but... I'd love to see something different. We saw a little bit earlier on, they tried the double stack in mid. I don't necessarily, I, I like that idea, but I think they need to get this this B ramp control. Like I feel like they're they're losing that pretty early on. I'd like them to either recontest for it right away or just getting the utility in a better place here for A ramp. It just, they're losing these two ramp controls so quickly, which allows Wildcard just to have free reign of whatever they want to do. So right now you can see Wildcard are, are not entertaining this B ramp at all. Except for Susp, he's just going to be the one player that's just going to, you know, figure things out. That's going to get removed. So, okay, things are looking a little bit better. But now they need to shut down this ramp control. They have to be able to put all these bodies into use. That nade is going to land perfectly for Dardani to be able to find that kill. Now we're starting to see a little bit more of that coordination we talked about here, Paladin. Yeah, much better there. From Jardani. And he'll find himself another. Now it's just Stanis on Fuzi. Captain and Sniper, what can they offer up in the 2v5? Minute 5 left on the clock, they've got a lot of time to work, but not a lot of space to make this a possibility. With how much money they have, why not go for it? Really keep the pressure on the CT side. Fuzi gets offered up a freebie on a 4 Taylor, switches over to the rifle and starts... 
Starts to close the distance. Molly's good for sandbags. It will flush out a player. Oh, fall back. The flash is so high. Majestic falls. And all of a sudden, it's a 2v3, Laz. Tighter and tighter now, but Jardani is there to end the round, supposedly. As he takes out Stanislaw, Fuzi now in the 1v3 has an inkling as to this final player in the back of the site. Why? He finds it. B1 will fall. And Fuzi will make a complete stomping into this B bomb site, hoping that maybe Marka might overdo this. But AMC is going to charge straight into the site. Smoke is good. Oh, no. Oh, no. Fuzi goes charging through that fake plan. He knew he was going to go charging through it. And it's a 2v5 for wildcard. To keep this clean sheet alive after that 2-0 start. Oh, man. It's just not on the tea leaves. I'm, I, honestly, it's just... You, you think it looks so good for Marka. You're like, they're doing the right things. They had the three-on-one. And, and it just falls apart. Like, I think they get nervous. Or I don't know what's happening. But honestly, even that... I hate calling him out. But I hated that B1 pushing that A ramp on the flank. He didn't need to. He put himself in a situation where he went for the one-on-one. -on -one, he lost it. Giving Kuzi so much time, but oh my god, what a round to lose here for Marka. So unfortunate. Now Fuzi oh. again, he is just dominating this game. He's feeling fired up. He's sitting at 13 and 2. Let's not forget that. And now Marka down to two MP9s with an M4 with no more utility except for one player, Majestic. But it's just not going to matter at this point because wildcard, I mean, they have some decent control. Unless they lose this player in mid from Stan, that could give up an opening. And that's not bad now. So Marka, maybe a little bit of relief. Yeah, that's a biggie. But, of course, man advantages have not been the reason why they're winning rounds at this point for Marka. Sonic now boosts it up. Spots a player in the back of double. It's a little bit of an arm. And he gets a significant damage in. But the damage goes both ways. And this is not Kill. That round gets much more difficult to win, and he needs that little adjustment there. Leaves it all on to the Swede yet again. 1v1. And with low HP, he can still get that one shot off. 35 seconds now. Fuzi anticipating aggression from Taylor on the other end, but not to be just yet. For Taylor giving him the respect. I mean, honestly, he rightfully deserves at this point. No smoke to value the cross, so Taylor will get all the information if he holds that line. Yeah, really, because at the time this low, like, Fuzi's either going to have to commit to a fake plant or, or something else. Oh, but Taylor, no, no, no. Repositions himself. Okay, so now he realizes we had actually a bit of a unsure idea. He's like, oh, wait, is it the other side? And now Fuzi in a great position. Oh, oh no, why no. did he jump there? Oh, no! I was going to say, that was a perfect position. He had, he had a really good idea, and I think he could have been able to find that, but either way, look, Mark is able to pull back around right down to the nitty-gritty, but hey, it, they'll take it any day of the week, and they're going to be able to pick up the op. Insult to injury, you, you love to see it. Yeah, Fusi read that. He read that the heaven play was coming through, but... Gets a little indecisive and decides to slightly shift his crosshair back over to CT spawn. And that's when Taylor decides to swing out. It's just Counter-Strike for you. And now, I mean, for Marka, it, it's tough because every round that they have ahead of them is going to be a grueling one. Wildcard, again, have so much money to rinse through. They will have no issues towards the tail end of this half. And if you're Marka... Make this competitive. Maybe you can make this a realistic chance. Good boost already. An AMC posted up though, but again, in a position where you should be able to. Oh my god! Never mind. I was gonna say might be able to get the shot, fall back. You know, I can play a little bit better of a setup, waiting for his teammates. No. Get one tapped away, and now we're just seeing spams here from the CT side. Not bad here from Jordani, but now the HP of Susp is down to 51. More utility just to push these CTs back. And you can see Wildcard, they're overextending as well. Love this from Stan. This is a good play. Oh man, they are just going for big firefights in the smoke. They have no idea. They can't see much, but they're still prevailing. Now B1 in a very 
unparticular position here. Has to go against three, but has to be able to win these two fights. And this player behind this railing needs to stay alive as long as possible. Needs to be able to stay alive, please. And now B1 just hoping for something, but no. My god, it'll be wildcard to be able to find themselves in eight rounds as we're going into the last round of the first half. Whew. Wildcard again. I mean, if, if you're Marco Registrata there, you're thinking you've got no choice but to go for it. I mean, these rounds have just been racked up right in front of your face. Who cares? I mean, if we save, we're not really going to get much out of it. And with that, another poor purchase towards the tail end. Two smokes, one Molotov. And he shot another enemy. They try their head and ramp, but kills through smoke. Man advantage is found, and it's right back to that well machine from Wildcard. This time doing it on the offense. And JBA now showing that he is a stellar, stellar rifler. Nine rounds found on that offense. We'll throw it to a break, and when we come back, at second half. Ready to go. Map number two, second half, and uh it's been a little bit quiet here for Marka as we now need to see players like AMC to be able to find themselves activation here on the T side to, to bringing this to a more competitive one. As you can see, it was 9-3 in favor for Wildcard, and all they need is a few more and get out themselves a quick and easy 2-0. But with shots like that, Paladin, I don't know if that's looking good here for Marka because those USPs and those CTs are loading this damn kill feed very quickly. Oh, and now JBA is charming in as well. They're getting crunched on by Sus from the other end as well. 
It's not looking good here for Marco Redistrada. The upstarts looking to cause damage here in the Katowice North American close qualifier. So far, that party has been very quickly spoiled. Unless Taylor and Majestics can cause some sort of ruckus. Oh, charging up the ramp here and trying to cut down the distance with these blocks at hand. And Taylor will find one on the sus. So they've got an avenue back to the B bomb site if they choose. And Taylor's just going to hightail it. Suggesting that he was going to go there, but it's all a ruse. It's all to cause some rotations back the other way. And they'll recommit to this A ramp, but Sonic is there to see everything. He, know, he knows what's coming. He'll call back his teammates. He'll continue to whittle down these T players. And eventually, they will be absolutely eradicated. Double digits now found for wildcard as Marco Registrata. They continue to go off very quietly into the night. Yeah, definitely going to be a bit quiet. And I mean, honestly, for Fuzi, like you're sending himself at, uh, you know, 17-4. You know, JBA sending himself with a 14-8 with Susp. So these guys are having a really, really good game. And it's been really tough, like we said. I, I was really hoping to see a little bit more out of AMC. And unfortunately, a very quiet game for him thus far. And he was the, you know, the key instrument that was able to, you know, have that victory over team like Party Astronauts, like we said, where it was a pretty dominant game, you know, when they played. That overall series, he was at plus 25, and the next closest person on his team was negative. So, you gotta think about that. Right now, everybody's just running into the blender of wildcard. They're just doing a full mince meat on this. Over and done with, with one consolation of a prize, but wildcard, they make it look easy. Three CTs fighting for Beast Air's control, and all five of Marco Registrata right there to duel with them. And it just doesn't work out. Wow. And now, I mean, you're at this point where you're so far in the hole that you're just going to call tough purchases after tough purchases. And actually, they, they sell all of it. So I was actually thinking that they're going to invest again with Mac 10s, but not to be the case. Should be a freebie and should be map and match point for wild card yeah i definitely should right i mean again there's not i mean there is deagles but i mean no utility it's all about just hitting shots right now but those shots are just landing they've teed off it's gonna be a home run potentially here just because we can see that it's a five on two unless taylor can be able to find himself a nice little bit of a quick frag on this but it is a lot to ask. Yeah, spray paint the heart, man, because, like, look, this is not going to be a, a very heart and warming round for him. Molotov going to push him back even further. He's just getting caught in the middle of the wall, or the corner of the wall, I should say, and now we're on map series point, like you have predicted. It's all come down to this. Nine rounds needed to push this thing to overtime, or one round to be done and dusted. Feeling like it's going to be the latter there. Laz, I don't really think Marka has it in them. AMC finally gets the sniper out, but it has been so tough for him to get off the ground in vertigo here. I've been impressed with what I've seen in his open qualifying bouts. I was impressed with what I saw from him on Ancient as well, but tough, tall order here on vertigo. Okay, they're still going to try to make do with the rifles that they have, though. And they get themselves a favorable trade. Three on three. As they get mid-control as well. So Donnie's just shifted his way all the way through the ramp. And catches Cezla with his back turn. And now things get called into disarray for wildcard. Split across the map are Sonic and Chuck. They have no idea where these T's have gone off to. They've lost track of Jardani. He's got to get another. AMC will fall, though, and Sonic what? brings it down to a 1v1. 1v3 originally, and now it's all on to Majestics. In the 1v1, oh, no. the flash is immaculate, and Sonic clutches up to send Wildcard on to the next round of competition. That is a that, that's a pretty telltale way of showing how that series went through altogether. Uh, it just, again, like, I, I feel so bad for Marka, right? Because they were in these situations where they're in an advantage, they look pretty good, they're positioned.